Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you. Good morning. Hope that you all received sweet sleep on last night and woke up with bells and whistles on. Hey there, Heartbeat Rainy. How are you this morning? Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. It's a winning Wednesday. It's a wisdom Wednesday. Hey, Heartbeat Belinda. Heartbeat Nicole, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Yolanda, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Carolyn, Heartbeat Lamont, good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. Again, I hope you guys received sweet sleep and woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this day, a new day that the Lord has made, glory to God, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. So this morning, I come to stomp on the devil's head this morning, like every morning, but really this morning, because I want you to know that some of the things that you go through, some of the emotions that you have, that is not your fault. And those emotions have been dictating your life. Those emotions have been controlling your life. Some of the things you've been trying to get over for years, and it seems like you just can't get rid of it. But I come to tell you that on this morning, that if you are able to surrender to God, wholeness belongs to you. Remember, healing is one of your daily benefits and God's healing is not limited to physical ailments, but God wants to heal the brokenness in your heart that you may walk in the abundant life that he came for. So again, it's not your fault. Some of it's just, you know, our DNA, the deoxy ribonucleic acid, the things that, you know, we're made up of, we're made up of our parents' DNA. They came together and they created us. And so some things, you you know, you can't help it. So I want to look at 2 Samuel, yeah, 2 Samuel 9. And here we have, you know, the account of um, Mephibosheth. And David goes, you know, uh, to see if there's anyone left in the lineage of Saul, basically um, to show kindness um, for Jonathan's sake. And when he gets there, uh, Ziba begins to say that there is one son left that is, you know, Mephibosheth and that he's lame, you know, that he's crippled in his feet. And so Mephibosheth is crippled because not of something that happened on, to him that it was his doing. Remember, if you know this account and you know the history of this, you know that his maid or, you know, we might call it a nanny on today was running. And she fell because she was running from an approaching army that she thought would kill the child. And so she, well, Mephibosheth. And so she stumbled and fell. And that left him crippled. Now, I know that you might didn't fall, you might didn't stumble, but Mephibosheth's issue, it wasn't his issue. It wasn't his fault. So him being crippled wasn't his fault. So what am I saying? Somebody dropped him. And I'm saying this to you today. Some of the things that you're carrying it's not your fault. The anger issue that you may have had, somebody dropped you. You grew up in a household that may have been abusive. It's not your fault. We learn from what we see. And so this morning, I'm telling you that some of the issues that you may have had, some of, or have, some of the issues that you may beat yourself up about, it's not your fault. You did not do it yourself. It came from your environment. But I'm saying on this morning, that if you can surrender your heart, knowing that it's not your fault, releasing the guilt that you've been carrying for years. Some women, you know, you may feel like I'm not married. I've been going from this man to this man and it's not your fault. It comes from what happened in your past. I told you that God wants me whole got started because my parents got divorced when I was eight years old and I took that on for years. And so I wanted my father around. I wanted the relationship. So what did I do? I dated the wrong men looking for the father that I would never find in these men. It wasn't my fault. I didn't have anything to do with my parents getting um, divorced, but this is what happens in some household. It's, it's what happens. So we find some people 
people that end up being alcoholics. It's not your fault. If all you saw was whenever somebody had problems, that is what they turned to. They turned to bourbon instead of turning to the Bible. That is what you knew. But I come to tell you that on this morning, because you are a new creation and all things, old things have been made new, that that is not who you are anymore, that you have a right. You have the privilege because you are a child of the most high God. You have a privilege to be made done, renewed. You have the privilege to have your life done over. You get a do over because you are in Christ. Christ says that he will redeem the time if you can surrender your all to him. And so I'm coming again on this morning to tell you that is not your fault. It's not your fault. You know, some of us grew up just wanting the approval of our parents. No matter what we did, it wasn't good enough. And all we wanted to hear them say was job well done. Well, I come to tell you that mommy had an issue too. There was some brokenness in her life and we've got to stop these generational curses that are in our families. Our parents went through some hard times. They lived through some hard times. And so brokenness is all that they knew. They never got counseling. They never got help. What do what happens hurt people hurt people but we have we now know Jesus we know who we are now and we do not have to stay in that situation so let's get back to the account so David finds him right David then he sends for him and Mephibosheth is brought to David from Lodabar. What is Lodabar? That's the lowest that you can ever be. And so I'm telling you on this morning that if you have been stuck in Lodabar, Jesus wants you to get over in Goshen. He does not want you to live the way that you've been living. It says that the account says that David sends for him and that he then comes and he tells him that I'm going to be kind to you because of your father. He tells him, I'm going to restore you. He said, all of the land that even Saul ever had, he said, I'm I'm going to restore that back unto you. What are you talking about, Pastor G? What, what is the point of all this? What I'm saying is to you is this. Jesus has come right to your space on this morning. He sent for you to bring you up to where he is. And he's telling you that on this morning, that if you could just come, don't worry about it. You know, Mephibosheth was like ready to bow and give him honor. Jesus was like, David was like, listen, I'm doing this on the kindness of your father. Jesus is saying the same thing. He says, I'm doing this on the kindness of my father. Father, I want to restore you on this morning. I no longer want you to be hurt because it wasn't your fault. Those demons, those things that you are carrying, those emotions that you don't even understand where they're coming from. You know, those emotions that pop up in the most inopportune time. Jesus is saying, I want to heal you from that. I want to heal you from those childhood things. I want to heal you from those emotions that you got hurt as a young adult. I want to heal you from those things that you may have even gotten hurt as a senior, the a season say he says I come this morning to restore you because you've been carrying that thing for way too long he says this remember this is the year of the bigger and the better and you cannot get to the bigger and the better if you're still carrying the weight from the loan from Lodabar you got to get over into Goshen on this morning I'm telling you it's not your fault it wasn't your fault and God has come to redeem the time from you. So I want you to take off the shame. I want you to take off the guilt. Take off them dead clothes. Take off them anger clothes. Let Jesus call your name forth like he did Lazarus when he said Lazarus come forth. And so on this morning he said Doris come forth. He said Rainy come forth. Yolanda come forth. Eva come forth. You know the Eva, the Yolanda, the Rainy, the one that he knows. You know the one that he he sees you like no one else sees you. So he's calling you out of the childhood trauma. He's calling you out of the young adult trauma. You've carried it way too long. He said, now my yoke is easy. So listen, and my burdens are light. So he's saying this, I'm going to do the great exchange with you on this morning. You will no longer carry that. You will no longer carry the emotions from your mom. You will no longer carry the emotions from your dad. You will no longer seek approval from nobody else. When God has given you approval and he says that everything is all right, he's told you that you're made in his image. You will no longer carry glory to God. It's over, game over for that. I told you this morning, I'm coming to stop on the devil's head. You will be 
released from that bondage on this morning and you will walk in the bigger and the better. You will begin to experience the stress-free 2023. Listen, God didn't allow you to see this day just because they're still purposing you, but you've got to let go of all that. So what? They didn't tell you that you were great back then. So what? They didn't pat you on the back. Well, Jesus has come in your space this morning to pat you on the back, to encourage you, to tell you to get on up out of load up because I got milk and honey and Goshen over here for you. So I'm telling you on this morning to rise up from that place that you used to be in. That is not who you are anymore. Know your name, that you are a child of God, that you are an overcomer. You are not a victim. You are not what happened to you, but you are who you choose to be. And on this morning, you choose to walk in the word of God. You choose to stand on the foundation. You choose to go into the places that God has already opened doors for you. It's the year of the bigger and the better. And it's shown up the year of being stress-free in 2023. We're leaving all of that behind. That childhood trauma, it will not hold you in hostage anymore. It will not hold you in bondage anymore. You will walk in the freedom. And who the Father has set free is free indeed. And you will walk in the truth of Jesus Christ about who you are on this morning. We are going to get our wholeness on this morning. We are going to get our wholeness this year. And we are going to stay whole. No more broken heartbeats. We are being made whole. Listen, that is your daily dosage for this morning. It is not your fault. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms, God Wants Me Whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, say, God Wants Me Whole. And I am getting whole by the minute. Listen, getting back to that account, I can't let this part go. When he told, when David told, told Mephibosheth, he said this, he said, I'm going to restore you. But then he said this, he said, and you can eat at my table at any time. That's a word right there for somebody that when Jesus comes to restore you, he says, you can eat, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So when God comes to restore you on this morning, it is forever. It does not run out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, go out there and have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And guess what? I'll see you guys right back here tomorrow morning with your whole self. Know why? Because it's not your fault. Glory to God. I'll see you in the morning.